Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Waldo and in this video we're going to continue working on the Cummins and Eaton swap by focusing on the controls. Specifically, we're going to work on installing the accelerator and brake pedals and we're going to cut the comically large shifter down to size and get that installed. We're doing a Cummins swap. I didn't intend for this to turn into an unboxing video, but here we are. This is it, my 1995 C3500 HD. We're swapping a 24 valve Cummins into it, along with a 5 speed Eaton Fuller transmission out of a Freightliner. The goal is to have a capable and comfortable truck for towing and hauling future projects. Here, watch this. Nice and smooth. Six inches really should be enough. It's a little bit ridiculous. Now, before we get into the video, I'm actually really excited to open this up. I just got this in the mail and uh, well, these are mirrors. So let's open them up and see what we got. I got my little helper here. Rhino loves helping me open packages. So I ordered these from Boost Auto Parts. And, ta-da! They are some sort of modern style GM towing mirrors. They have the flat glass and the convex glass. They all come with sort of a rear facing light, but I went ahead and got the high output version. It's got the turn signal indicator here. I went with the amber dotted running light here. This is the running light and a turn signal. They actually have a lot of options you can do for this one, but I opted for the one where it'll be sort of half brightness for running lights and then full brightness for the turn signal. I got the chrome mirror caps. It's not actual chrome, it's plastic, or it's chrome colored plastic, but you know, it looks pretty good though. So I put a lot of thought into what type of mirrors I should put on the truck. Or rather, should I keep the mirrors that it had, those sort of West Coast style truck mirrors? Or should I get uh, sort of a more modern set of towing mirrors? I had a lot of people comment and gave some really good ideas. Some people recommended I keep the, the mirrors that it had on it because they were pretty cool looking. They were nice quality mirrors too. Some people said I should get some, you know, GM style towing mirrors. Some people recommended I get the Dodge style towing mirrors because those are actually pretty awesome too. But I decided to go for this. And these are actually intended to fit this older GMT 400 style truck. So it will bolt right on. As for the wiring harness itself, my truck doesn't have power mirrors or anything like that. So I'm going to have to do a bit of custom wiring on this anyway. So that's not surprising but I am totally down for any wiring challenges. And here's the driver's side mirror, which really just kind of looks the same. Yeah, I'm pretty excited to get these on. I guess my, the biggest concern with the truck mirrors that came on the truck is that they're so wide, they stick out so far that it's kind of inconvenient. And especially, you know, I sometimes drive on roads that are pretty narrow and it would really suck to accidentally hit something, whether it's a branch sticking out on the side of the road or another vehicle's mirror that would be pretty terrible. So this will help a lot with that, I think. These definitely are not as wide, but they also move out like so if you actually need wide mirrors. So if you're actually towing something that's really wide, pretty neat. I'll get these installed in a later video. I'll probably do a video where I reassemble a truck and, and reveal it, you know, reveal how it looks after the paint job. And this will be a part of that. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, get the brake pedal set up. Now the one on the left is the brake pedal that came with the truck and it's obviously from an automatic because it has the really wide pedal. As I mentioned in the last episode, I bought this skinny brake pedal, the one on the right, from a junkyard and it doesn't fit for a couple of reasons. The profile is different and if you look at the top part of the pedal, the part where the master cylinder connects or rather the rod to the master cylinder connects is not the same on these. They're different lengths and also this is closer to the pivot point, whereas this one's farther away from the pivot point. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this pedal from the automatic. I'm going to cut the wide bit off and then weld this one onto it. And it should be as simple as that.
If you like to see welds get painted, this is for you. Nothing special, just a can of Rust-Oleum. Once it dries, I have a nice new pad for it and it'll be good to go. Beautiful, it's basically a brand new brake pedal. And while I'm at it, there are a couple of bushings here that I'm gonna replace as well, just so that it has silky smooth operation. And with that, the brake pedal is good to go. Now as for the accelerator pedal, just so that I can get an idea of where the positioning is really supposed to be, I'm gonna take the GM pedal and put this in place so I can visualize this. That's about where it goes. I think accelerator pedals usually are recessed behind the brake. They don't stick out quite as far. And in this case, it does actually look like this positioning is pretty decent. So I think I can use this as a guide. And just to make this easy, the face of the pedal is almost in the same plane as this piece right here. It's recessed back a little bit farther. So I think I'll go with that. This will give it plenty of room for travel as well. And that puts the Dodge accelerator pedal somewhere around here. So before I go mounting the accelerator pedal, I actually want to get the throttle cable through the firewall first. Because where the top of the pedal is depends on where this ends up on the other side of the firewall. So luckily it's actually very convenient that this flat spot here is just about in the right spot. So I'm going to go ahead and drill a hole here. I do need to make it kind of square-ish or rectangular, so I'm going to have to do that. Maybe I'll use a file or something, but uh, yeah, let's drill a hole and get this thing through. Well, I got this thing all squared off with a file, so this throttle cable should just fit right in now. There we go, it's a nice tight fit. All right, let's get to fabricating a solution to mount this pedal up. So I'm gonna weld this spacer in here, and then I can actually fit these bushings in, and then a half inch bolt will go through nicely. So that'll give a nice pivot point. The bracket will be back here and it'll have a couple plates that go and connect to each side of this. And that should rotate really nicely. And that's it for the accelerator pedal bracket. It just bolts onto the firewall with the three lower holes. Bolt in like that and moves fairly freely. So it came out pretty well, I think. Well, here we have it. We got it installed and it's nice and smooth. In fact, I think it's actually smoother than it was when it was in the Dodge. The parts that I fabricated to make this rotate smoothly, it really is a better design than what came from the factory on the Dodge because what the Dodge had was just some plastic stuff up here that was pretty loose, but this thing is pretty nice and tight. It's also fully hooked up to the throttle cable too, so this is another piece of the puzzle that's complete. All right, it is now time to install the shifter, and I'm gonna start with this little top cover here. It's really nice and easy to access this since I've cut out the hole in the floor. And the shifter just goes right on like that. Throw a bolt through this, hold that in place, slide the boot down to make it look nice for now, 
but actually, I hope this isn't the frame. I don't think it is. Just shows how enormously huge this thing is. There we go. Now you can see the top of the shifter. Yeah, I don't have a seat in here currently to be able to put this into perspective, but you can see the top of the steering wheel and the shifter goes well above that. It's a little bit ridiculous. So the problem that I had with this shifter was that when I shifted forward, it would hit the dashboard right here. So what I need to do is cut some of this off so this doesn't hit the dashboard anymore. How much do I cut off? Well, I don't know. It's a little tricky to tell because obviously there's no dashboard installed right now. So I'm not sure, but I mean, considering how high it is, I can really cut a good amount off if I want to, and it's not going to be too small. I was kind of thinking I did want to keep it a little on the big side just for the fun of it. So I think I'll probably just cut somewhere down here. We'll figure out how much I'm going to take off, but you know, it could be a few inches. It could be more than a few inches and then I'll weld it back together. And then hopefully all of that will be below. We'll get the weld so that it's down below the boot. Maybe I might actually have to weld it up a bit higher. There's also a part number here. I guess you guys can't see it, but on this side it says Eaton and there's a part number. I kind of would like to keep that. Maybe I'll cut it and weld it up higher somewhere. As long as I grind it down smooth and then paint it, you won't really be able to tell unless you look pretty closely. All right, so I think I'm gonna take a good six inches off of this, somewhere in the middle here. I think I can spare six inches. It'll still be big enough, but that should also give me clearance so that it won't hit the dashboard anymore. Also, I don't wanna to have to do this more than once, so six inches really should be enough. So I went ahead and put a beveled edge on both ends of this so that there's a place for the weld material to go so that after I weld it, it will be completely strong. It's not my first time butt welding together what are basically two thick pieces of round bar. All right, so I got these guys in this vise and they're all lined up. So this will let me tack them in place and it'll hold them together so that they're pretty straight. Well, there it is. I just got some welds to grind down and this thing should look like it was never modified. Ground it down, went over it with a flap disc, a little bit of 80 grit sandpaper to smooth it out. And now I'm gonna throw a little bit of paint on it. pretty good. Clutch feels good. Accelerator pedal feels great. Shifter feels great. Yeah, so I got this thing reinstalled and I think it looks great. It's right about at hand level from where, you know, your hands might be on the steering wheel. So I think it's going to be a pretty good ergonomic position. It still definitely seems like a truck shifter because it is, you know, pretty large. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. We are a little bit closer to having this project completed, although there still is a lot of work to do. I have no idea what I'm gonna be working on next, but I don't know, maybe I'll work on the fuel system. The Dodge Donor truck came with a high performance, fast fuel system, which I plan on switching over to this truck. So make sure you're subscribed to see what happens next. Speaking of subscribers, while filming this, we just reached 6,000 subscribers. So I wanted to say thank you so much to all of you who have watched these videos and subscribed. We'll see you in the next one.